Hey, I'm Max. I'm an aerospace engineering student at TU Delft and I got my IB diploma last year, 2021. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through how I got a 7 in IB physics. First, I'm going to go into advice on how to learn anything, then how to study for IB exams. Then I'm going to give you advice on how to learn content that relates directly to the IB. Then I'm going to talk about helpful websites and then I'm going to give you some advice on what to do in the actual exam. And at the end, I'm going to summarize everything. Okay, so the first principle I want to talk about is the 80-20 principle, or also called Pareto principle. And it states that 80% of the outcomes come from approximately 20% of the causes. And lucky for you, for a 7 in physics, you only need about 60%, which means with 20% of maximum effort you can put in, you can definitely get a 7. Now, the hard part about this is to know what these 20% of efforts are, because the maximum effort would mean you would do every single thing you could do in order to study for exams. But the thing is now you have to figure out what these 20% are. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will know what these 20% represent. The second principle I want to talk about is active recall and space repetition. Now there are thousands of videos online, so I'm not going to go into each of them and how they work. The most important takeaway from this is that in order to actually learn and retain certain concepts and information, you have to test yourself and test yourself in between certain time intervals for that information to stick. Now, the number one technique in order to apply active recall and for the exams are doing Past papers. Past papers are the single most important thing you can do to study for IB exams. And I say that because of the following three reasons. First of all, you apply active recall. You test yourself because then you know what you know and what you do not know. The second reason is one of the best things you can do against being nervous on the actual exam dates because you will have done so, so many past papers and at the end, your actual paper will just feel like another past paper. You've done so many of these, you've had so much practice that there's no reason of being nervous because you've seen it so many times. And the last and biggest reason is, is that you train your autopilot. So you will have about 20 to 21 exams during your exam season. And the likelihood of you feeling absolutely perfect on each and every day of those exams is it's just not very likely. Which means in order to guarantee that you get a seven in the particular subject, we're here for example physics, you have to guarantee that even on your worst day, you are able to perform on a level which will lead to a seven in the end. And in order to do so, you have to train your autopilot, which means that on the day of the exam, your autopilot can take over if you don't feel great and can basically write the exam for you. But in order to actually have that autopilot and to train that autopilot, you have to do tons and tons of past papers because the questions are also repetitive, meaning that you're actually practicing these questions. And also at the end, you will know how to answer these questions because the IB wants you to answer these questions in a specific way. Okay, so how do you actually use these past papers? How do you actually get the most out of them? Well, ideally you do them once you've learned all the content, but also if you haven't, if there are still some gaps, you can still do these past papers. You just start by doing one and you write down all the questions you couldn't do. Then you look up the answers and then of those questions you look at the particular topic and you also revisit that topic so for the next time you actually understand what's going on in that particular topic. So for example here I did the November 18 paper so I will go through all of these past papers and write down the questions I couldn't do and then at the end write down all the topics that I didn't know and then once I've done them I write a D after them so that I know I've done it and then I go to the next past paper. At the end you can go through the questions you didn't know to actually verify that you now know the answer after looking up the answer and after revising those particular topics you had trouble with again. And my last tip concerning past papers is to actually save two or three of them, print them out and do them under the exam conditions. I think for IB Physics HL paper 2 is like 2 hours and 50 minutes. Do them under like exam conditions. So set yourself a timer, lock your room, do whatever you need to be alone and actually write the exam so you can actually have the exam feeling and work out which tactics work for you and which don't in terms of time management. And although the IB has been around for I think 30, 40, 50 years, the syllabus of each course changes every six to eight years, which means normally you only have around maybe on average five years worth of past papers per subject, which means you do not have like an infinite pool of questions you can test yourself with. And here flashcards are the best option. You can actually make your own physical flashcards or you can use a computer in two ways. One of which is Anki or IB Physics HL. There are already Anki decks out there, which means you can simply download those 
and then just go through these flashcards and see what you know and what you don't know. But here you can't really see how well you're doing in one particular area of that subject. So another alternative is to use Google Sheets. Now I'll show you what I did for chemistry. We were lucky because our physics teacher made quizzes for us so we didn't have to make our own flashcards. For chemistry we did not have those quizzes so I made my own flashcards and it looks something like this. You have the subtopic and then a question or a state or defined term. In the first column you have the question and in the second column you have the answer which is in invisible writing so you can't see it. Once you click on it you can see it. And depending on if you could answer the question or how well you can answer the question you color code the question in column A. For example red if you couldn't answer it at all, uh, yellow if you could answer it to a certain extent and green if you could fully answer it. On the first slide you have an overview of all the topics and then on the particular date where you did said topic put in the date and then you color code it depending on how well it went. For example the first four topics were fine when I was uh, starting to study for the exams but then when it came to I don't know, organic chemistry, you can see it didn't go very well. So you can make your own and then power through these every couple days and then color code it. And then once you're done with all of them, you go back to the red ones, see if it improved or not, level it up to yellow and then go through all the yellow ones. And then once everything is green, then in theory, you can start with past papers. Okay, now I'm going to get to some helpful websites which helped me along the way. I don't know if the website I used for exam pass papers are still there, but just find some exam pass papers out there. You can probably find them on Reddit or anywhere. There should be somewhere out there. Get access to them. If you want to be really safe, download them if that uh, website crashes, for example. Then for physics, there's one YouTuber called Chris Donor, which saved my life so many times. He explains these topics in a video really, really well, and only to the extent to which you have to understand them for IP physics. So definitely check Chris Donor out. Then there's Grey Gorilla, uh, which is another quiz platform. What they do is they quiz you on each subtopic so you can see how well you can work around the problems in each particular subtopic. Next there's ibphysics.org which is not a quiz website, it's more of a note website so there are small summaries of each topic but they're not very extensive. It's really just the most basic stuff. So if you're learning a new topic for example, definitely check out ibphysics.org but otherwise I would still return to your textbook because it does leave out a lot of stuff. Okay, lastly, if you can, get access to Cognitive. Our school provided us with Cognitive accounts, and I think it does cost something, but even if you have to buy it yourself, I would really consider it, or ask your school to get you and your classmates an account on Cognitive. It's less extensive than a book, but it still has everything in it, and the best thing about it is that after each page, it will test you on what you've just read, which is just amazing. So you can actually test if you actually understand what was just presented to you. It also has quizzes on each subtopic, and it explains everything really well with diagrams and etc. So definitely check out Cognitive. Now towards the end, I just want to give you some small exam tips. Most of these actually come from my previous teacher. Okay, so the grade boundary for 7 in physics is approximately 60% on average. And in paper 2, you will have about 8 to 12 questions. So let's say you have 10 questions. And each of them are basically split into two halves. The top half being a bit easier and the bottom half being a bit harder. And, and each question basically corresponds to one major topic within the physics syllabus. So in theory, in order to get a 7, you could answer 6 questions correct and leave out the last 4. But we could also do is answer the top half of each question correctly and then you only have to answer two parts of the bottom half so the more challenging part correctly so in the first five minutes what you do is you read the top sentence of each question that's it so you get the general gist of what this is about so you can read the top question you can probably say oh yeah this is electromagnetism for example and then you skip straight to the last part and you see if this is something you're comfortable with you think you could answer and you do that for every question at the end you will have somewhat of an idea of which of these last questions you can answer and if you have more than two in there, then you're basically set. That's already great. And then what you do is you start off by doing the questions you think you can definitely answer. And only then you go to the questions where you're like, ah, oh, I don't really think I can answer this. Now, in the middle of the exam, definitely take like a one minute break where you think about everything else than physics. What I like to do is just to close my eyes, breathe in and out 10 times, just to meditate for like a few seconds. And then you get back into it. This is great when you've gone through the whole paper once and most likely you've left out some questions which you didn't really know at the time when you wanted to focus on questions you could actually answer. You take a one minute break and then you go back trying to answer the questions that you didn't answer beforehand. Now at the end, instead of trying to come up with some kind of answer for questions really 
really don't know anything about in the last couple of minutes you should rather look over the questions you can answer because you definitely know how to answer these and the only thing that will prohibit you from getting these points is a small mistake so definitely go over those questions at the end rather than trying to come up with some kind of answer for a question you really don't know anything about now to summarize in order to get a 7 in IB physics or really in any IB science is to use active recall you just want to keep testing yourself and at some point it'll just stick and the best way to do so is by doing past papers but not only do past papers apply active recall but you're actually training exactly what the IB wants you to do and practice makes perfect and unfortunately or well depending on how you see it you're being graded on how well you can perform on these tests and not how well you actually purely understand the subject and in addition to that if you've done tons of past papers you just generally feel more prepared you've done this a thousand times before so i get nervous so that's it for me if you're interested in what life looks like after the ib then click on this video if you want to see more ib content then definitely consider subscribing good luck with your exams and i'll see you next time Bye bye